it's a problem as old as the field of robotics itself. How do we get robots to interact with the environment? More specifically, how do we get the Franco robots to use their end effectors to do manipulation tasks? Probably the most straightforward way is to use um, imitation learning, which is, the, is a technique where a robot learns to perform tasks by mimicking human demonstrations. And this method leverages the human's ability to intuitively perform complex tasks and allows the robot to observe and replicate these actions. The inherent pro problem is that imitation learning needs a lot of good demonstrations for the training. And teleoperating with, for example, with a space mouse is probably the most common way to get these demonstrations for imitation learning. But they give us high quality data, but we still have to um, get a human demonstrator to, to sit down, learn how to use the, the process of teleoperation, and it takes a lot of time. So instead of teleoperating in a simulation environment, why can't I just get a real world demonstration by filming myself opening a microwave and learn policy from that? Or even better, why can't I just go on YouTube, take a bunch of videos of people opening a microwaves and use that to teach my robot how to open a microwave on itself? Well, that's the topic of our working paper. We are proposing a pipeline that takes um, Video, video demonstrations of humans doing contact-rich manipulation tasks and using that to teach our robots to do set. To get to that point, we need to transfer the information about contact points from the real world to simulation so we can pre-train models that can be deployed to learn manipulation policies directly from real world human demonstrations. And we propose the use of Dino V2 by Meta Research um, Dino is a large vis vision model that is able to robustly transfer all kinds of um, visual features and we use it for example to take this handle we give Dino one reference picture of a microwave we say here this is the handle this is what we want to touch and Dino just transfers it to any kind of picture of a microwave we can throw at it it perfectly segments out um, the handle and tells us that's the point in this picture, that's the same feature, that's the same feature you want to manipulate. This information is used as conditioning by the diffusion policy. It is the same diffusion that is used to generate high fidelity images. But instead of images, we output the robot actions and we condition the generation on the observations made by the robot. And that's where the heat map we are generating with Dino comes in. Um, we additionally condition the diffusion on the contact information we are getting so we focus more on these areas of interest the areas we actually want the robot to interact with the hypothesis is that um, with this extra contact information the diffusion policy is able to generalize very well after just a few demonstrations so for example um, on a few demonst human demonstrations of opening a microwave the model is able to generalize to other tasks like opening a toaster 